2005, I started my first business. And by 2007, I found myself living in a trailer. That's the American dream right there. Anyhow, I was in the center of the state. We were renting a trailer because it was all we could afford at that point. And I had two kids and one kid on the way. And I discovered a crop that made me feel so much more secure, at least on calories. That crop was cassava. A retired missionary shared some cassava cuttings with me that he had gotten from some Indians from India that were his nearby neighbors. And he had been a missionary to Ecuador and he was very familiar with this plant. So he was growing cassava in his backyard. And so here I am thinking, if my business keeps expanding the way it's been expanding for the past two years, I'm gonna need more calories in the ground. So cassava was something that we started growing and then I moved and we ended up carrying cassava with us and growing cassava and then I have always had cassava anytime possible in the ground because I think it's one of those excellent plants where you can just keep replanting as it goes out and particularly if you're in a tropical climate it's like you can just rotate through and you always have calories in the ground this bank of calories and the harvesting time is not particularly important compared to a lot of other plants. What I realized in growing cassava under pressure was it was a plant that I could count on. It didn't have very many pest problems or any at all. And it would produce consistently on a schedule. And in a tropical or subtropical climate, I could plant it and then every time we harvested, I could just cut some canes and plant some of those canes and stick them in the ground to start more. So I would get you know, a few meals worth of roots and I could start a new one and then I could go on to the next plant. So if I had about 30 or 40 of them growing, we could perpetually kind of have some roots in the ground and be producing. And so this is why this plant years later ended up being one of my top recommendations for Florida. It was a survival crop that I could count on. And the other two root crops for calories that I generally recommend in that climate are true yams and sweet potatoes. But out of the three of those, cassava didn't require anything to climb on. And it was also more versatile than sweet potatoes because sometimes you just don't want to eat something sweet. It's starchy and dense and about twice the calories of a potato, but it was much easier to grow than white potatoes. And all I had to do was stick pieces in the ground, even in so-so soil, even without irrigation, and it would make something for me, which was wonderful. So when I wrote Florida Survival Gardening in 2020, this was my top Florida survival gardening, one of my very top Florida survival gardening plants. When I wrote Totally Crazy Easy Florida Gardening five years before that, talking about the plants that got us through no matter what, that was one of the top plants. And I have felt the same way. But now that I live in zone eight, I was wondering, well, could I make this plant work here? Will it work in lower Alabama? Would it work in the panhandle of Florida where it gets colder? This is a tropical plant, so it'll freeze to the ground and you lose production through the entire cold season. I did find that it'll come back from the roots and you can get it in the next year. It could be 18 months or two years from the time you first plant it, which isn't nearly as good as when I was further south in Florida and I had a longer growing season. Or if you're in the true tropics where you can just perpetually grow and grow and grow and grow and you always had it. But the roots would keep in the ground through the winter and could be harvested. And if they were too small, I just had to wait until the next season. I could just root around the base and say, okay, how big are these things? They're only about that big. I'm just gonna wait on this until sometime next year. But I was thinking, well, there are different varieties of cassava. There are different cultivars of cassava. I know this from being in the Caribbean. We had varieties that were produced in four or five months, and we had varieties that took almost a year, and then there were some that took 14 months, 16 months, even in that climate. And they would be great big plants with great big roots. But that sort of thing wouldn't be particularly suitable to zone eight unless I wanted to wait a couple of years or maybe even a little more to get roots. So when we got here, I went on to Etsy and I asked some friends for cassava cuttings and I talked to Josh Jameson at Cody Cove Farm 
and he sent me a few varieties. So I had seven, eight, nine varieties, something like that, and I just planted them from the, and I don't even know what the names of those varieties were. Some of them had names when I got them and I totally forgot them. I just planted them all out, and I figured the ones that made roots inside of an Alabama growing season, inside of one year's growing season, those are the varieties we're gonna concentrate on, and those are the ones that I've started harvesting. And when I went and harvested, I saw, out of some of those varieties, some that only had roots that were about this big, or one or two little roots after a long, hot summer. And then some other ones had roots that were about this big, nice big spokes of roots growing out from the center of where I had planted the canes. Those are the ones that we are saving cuttings from for this next year's garden. We identified two out of those varieties that were productive enough to say, okay, this is a one season turnaround from the last frost date of spring to the first frost date of fall and winter. And we actually had to harvest a month earlier than expected due to an unexpected uh, frost event. Today we are pulling cassava plants. We are at the top of the range for cassava. And so we planted about six or seven different varieties, various cuttings off of Etsy and from friends. Maybe we might have been up to eight or nine varieties, I'm not even sure. But we planted them all out to see which ones would actually make good yucca roots here in the short period of time that we have for them to grow compared to their native range in the tropics. So we are zone eight growing cassava. And as you can see, some of these gave us some roots inside of the growing season. We're supposed to have a frost tomorrow night, so it's time to pull. And some of them gave us a lot of roots. So this variety right here, this looks like our winner. Not even sure what its name is, but it did it in the right time. And that is how you figure out what grows in your yard. Plant a bunch of stuff, and if it works, it works. And the ones that don't work, don't plant anymore. Those are the ones that we're saving cuttings from, and I, I wish I had cuttings to share with you guys. I know some people are gonna say, hey, can you send me some cuttings? But we just grew out enough seed cuttings for ourselves for this year, we may have some next year. But this is our survival gardening crop for zone eight, and it's one that we can rely on alongside of our sweet potatoes and our true yams, and then the various roots that we grow through the winter, like daikons and turnips and rutabagas. This is just a very excellent crop and it's very gratifying to see that we can still grow it in zone 8. So if you're in zone 8, 9, 10, 11, beyond, anywhere warm, cassava is excellent. You can grow pretty much any variety, but there are varieties that will make it in zone 8. And if you haven't tried to grow cassava before, I highly recommend giving it a try, and perhaps there are even varieties that'll go up to uh, zone seven. But I'm gonna have to leave that to you guys to try out. Thanks for joining me. If you're interested in learning more about Florida gardening in particular, check out Florida Survival Gardening and Totally Crazy Easy Florida Gardening. And if you wanna learn more about how to survive the apocalypse, no matter where you live, check out Grow or Die, The Good Guide to Survival Gardening, where I talk about calories and nutrition and how to start gardens with very little work and effort and money. And I will put links to those books below. Thanks for joining me. I hope you enjoy this video and I hope you try some cassava because it's truly excellent and it's a lot of fun to grow. Very simple. Catch you next time and until then, may your thumbs always be green. <laughs>